Hi, welcome to Half the Shell. So this is our episode three, and today we're going to talk about The Kindest Lie by Nessie Johnson. So a little bit about this book. We are following two main characters, well, really one main character, uh, Ruth Trudeau. So she's a black woman originally from Ganton, Indiana. And if you know anything about Ganton, Indiana, it's basically a working class community and, and also a black community. And, you know, she had a secret big secret that she's been hiding until um her husband wants to have a baby and then she wouldn't really say anything she just kind of shut down because of her own trauma but her husband doesn't know that so long story short when she was 17 she had a baby and she left it all behind because you know she was gonna go to Yale she was gonna go become someone something right and her grandmother who we call mama and her brother Eli they took care of everything so that was basically you know her big secret and she told her husband and then she decided to go back to Gantel Indiana uh, and find out her son and this is a story about the black community and and um you know the the struggles that they they have with the whites and and the secrets and the sins and the just the pressure and all the trauma that they have gone through and all the sacrifices that that her family has gone through so that she can become something along the way she makes friends with this little boy 11 year old white boy named midnight now he's white and he's from Ganter, indiana as well but he's not you know, he's not privileged. He comes from a very broken family. He doesn't have family support. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's also white. So we get to see a lot of power play between white and black and also between class classes. Um, she, um, like I said, Ruth is from a working class. Well, well the family is from a working class. Like, even in black community, you know, there's a different variety of classes, right? There's um, her husband, who is also black, her husband named Xavier, and he's not from a working class like her. He ha- is a little bit more privileged, um, a little bit wealthier, and and he felt like he kept having to prove all over to Ruth and to other people that he should be accepted in black community as well, just because he's a little different than other black folks. So now that being said, this book, we get to see through a few themes. First one is motherhood. Okay, so Ruth's um, chance of becoming a mother well, uh, or lack of and, you know, sacrifices, family that mama, her grandmother had to go through so the Ruth can be something. Um, the loyalty that her brother Eli has shown throughout the family. And we get to see the class and racism, of course. And um, this book's really hit home because there are a few things that this book talks about, like um, like family and sacrifices, where you know her she was trying, Ruth was trying to figure out her past, and and her mama was like, "We did all this for you, so that so that what you can just throw it away." And then this is one of those lines that a lot of immigrants' kids actually face. You know, your parents came from whatever country and they came with nothing they sacrificed a lot of things so that you can have a better future but at the same time they're using that as almost like a manipulative tool so that that you do what they want you to do and if you kind of rebel then you know this the whole notion of this is how you repay us kind of happens so this book really resonated with me I mean of course I would never understand what it's like to be black in America because I'm not black as you can see but that family and sacrifice is definitely something that I can relate to now, this book is also really good at portraying the the normal daily life because this is not a book where you just have a problem, solve a problem, and have a good ending. The end has so many unanswered questions, so many flaws still, and they're good flaws because, well, depending on how you look at it. Um, and what I mean by that is that in life, you know, we solve something. We, we understood what our brothers and sisters went through. Does that mean that we're going to get rid of our bias forever? No, 
No, of course not. We're still going to have our own bias. It's going to take a really, really long time for us to get rid of our own bias. Just like that, that book does that so well. Oh my gosh. At the end, you get to understand that Ruth finally, finally found her answer. She understood her family a little bit more, but you also get to see that the flaws that her family has, the flaws within Ruth, is not going to go away. And we don't know what the future will hold. I will give, well, for rating, I will give this. See, the thing is, it's hard for me to give this uh, a book a rating because it is uh, so close to home. So it's really hard for me to give a rating. But because of how real this book is, how many social issues that it touches, and not only just social issues, but also you know individual issues that you have within your family. I have no reason to, other than to give um, this book a five. So I would say go get this book. This is a really good book, and I definitely recommend it. And also, it has a beautiful cover. And Nancy Johnson, her, she's a little bit about her because I haven't mentioned her yet. Um, she's an Emmy time, uh, Emmy winning award TV journalist, and then you know this is her first book, and she does really well. And I think because she's a journalist, perhaps she's able to write a book that is so close to reality, um, that doesn't have like a Hollywood ending that you know is as real as it can be that's the best phrase that i i could tell you one of the quotes that i will read is actually at the end this is not spoiler it's just a really nice quote um let's see where did it go yes so this has something to do with uh, mothers and parenting so if you guys uh if you watchers are mothers this will hopefully this will you know resonate with you Perfect, mo- perfect mothers didn't exist. Only perfectly flawed ones did. Yeah, so I don't have kids. I will never know what it's like to be a mom, but I feel like a lot of moms can definitely relate to that. So anyway, go get this book. You know what to do. And thank you for watching us. We are also on um, Instagram, and then we also have our podcast, and then our podcast is available everywhere. And our podcast actually goes further in depth discussion of this book. So if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, click subscribe and share this, and uh, give us a shout out. Thank you. Bye.